Hi, I'm Sapna Sudharagani, a fellow in the Division of Infectious Diseases at Mayo Clinic Rochester. And I'm Jim Stackelberg, a consultant of the Division of Infectious Diseases, and also like to thank our co-author Lynn Estes, our infectious disease pharmacy specialist who's not able to be with us today. It is a pleasure to introduce our review, uh, uh, which is going to be published at the upcoming uh, issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Our paper is titled, Non-Anti-Infective Effects of Antimicrobials and Their Clinical Applications, a Review. This paper and review was really born out of uh, observations um, uh, the co-authors and myself had based on our practice in infectious diseases. We really perceive antimicrobials as having direct effects at pathogens and their primary role in trying to uh, help in uh, healing uh, in, in infections. But really there are other so-called effects that are perhaps not wanted necessarily, but at some occasions these are actually beneficial applications in other areas. Normally we expect and hope that antibiotics will be used for their antibacterial effect and normally that's what they're studied for, but there are some situations where their adverse effects are actually beneficial to the patient and a lot of the uses that we describe are for those kinds of uses. So there are appropriate uses of anti-infective agents outside of their anti-infective properties and the article summarizes those and what the strength of evidence is mm -hmm. in the hopes that it will aid clinicians to make those decisions. And so we did take it upon ourselves to do a comprehensive review of the literature uh, to, to focus on these non-anti-infective effects of uh, certain antimicrobials and these, these include macrolides, tetracyclines, sulfonamides, and ketoconazole. This is a novel review. There was variable level of evidence, and uh, we have learned a lot as we've put this together. Uh, but really, a lot of these uses are not FDA approved. And so we find that, that the uses that we have discussed include uh, chronic inflammatory pulmonary disorders, dermatological conditions, the use of macrolides in GI dysmotility, as well as rheumatoid arthritis, and uh, even in cancer, uh, such as prostate cancer in the case of ketoconazole. Now, uh, as we've come across the evidence, uh, we've really tried to also illustrate, um, just as our co-authors have reviewed this, and so it's not really a formal guideline, but it's really to illustrate uh, the quality of the evidence. So sometimes it was randomized control trials. On occasion, uh, there were meta-analyses available. And um, sometimes the results were consistent and clinically significant, and sometimes not, not so much. And so we have tried to, um, to give some informed um, uh, label to, to the quality of evidence um, in this paper. We think this will be um, of great interest to various subspecialists as well as uh, internists. And um, as, we, as we put this together, we also realize that there are limitations to studies that, are, that, have been, that have been done, and there are still unanswered questions, which include the duration of therapy for some of these effects, what are the long-term effects on the microbiome, on emergent microbial resistance, as well as, um, as other adverse effects on, on, on the patient. So these do need to be weighed and, and to look at the strength of evidence and um, whether it's endorsed by guidelines and FDA approval, et cetera. So um, we would be um, uh, you know, excited to see what, what other future studies show in this very relevant area. Uh, Dr. Stuckelberg, as we, were, we embarked on this journey, we had noticed a few uh, uses perhaps that we had come across more commonly. Is there anything that surprised you as we looked at the literature? I think probably most readers will be familiar, at least in a general sense, of uses of antibiotics and 
for example, dermatologic areas, uh, rosacea, and acne, uh, for gastric motility, uh, for the anti-inflammatory effects. I think uh, probably most clinicians are not as readily available with what the strength of the evidence is in those, mm -hmm. in those indications, so we hope that the article will be helpful uh, to readers when they're approaching an individual patient to weigh the uh, benefits and risks of antibiotic use. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. I think it is very fascinating that each compound, <coughs> each, each, each antimicrobial really has effects on numerous host physiological processes and receptors and, and that's why they're really, it's not just a, a one drug with one use, one island. And maybe that is something that, that really will be uh, relevant to, to uh, many areas in medicine now and in the future. So uh, thank you for your attention. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.com. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.